Well, greetings everyone and welcome back. You will notice a distinct lack of something on this video and once again it is my face so I'm so sorry those of you who are so looking forward to seeing my face again but uh, one more week. One more week I promise for sure and then you will get to see my dazzling beauty or whatever the heck it is that I have got. Okay, so I'm going to jump right into today's video. Uh, just a quick little idea I had, which does not make for a quick video, but it's something which I can just instantly talk about without a great deal of prep, and that is classic movies. Uh, just a recommendation of a bunch of classic movies that I like. There's a, There was a discussion on uh, the Twitters or whatever recently about classic movies, and um, mainly the really famous ones, like Lawrence of Arabia, and a heck of a lot of people recommended 12 Angry Men, and I do not blame them go see that film. It is fantastic, one of my favorites. I showed it to my teenagers, and they loved it, so yeah, seal of approval. Uh, most of these ones are a little more off the beaten path. I'll start with some of the more popular ones, and I, I think, I hope, you'll see why I recommended them. If you have not seen them, go see them. Let's start. Classic movie recommendation number one, The Pink Panther, starring Peter Sellers. Yes, boys and girls, The Pink Panther was originally a movie movie, a live action movie. In fact, it was a film series starring the uh, popular comedian slash actor Peter Sellers. The first one, I would argue, is the best because um, as funny as it was, it wasn't exactly a caricature. It was more a caper movie uh, with cons and a missing jewel, which is the Pink Panther of the title. The the later ones kind of devolved into slapstick. Still fun, still recommended, especially like the last couple after the first one. Uh, but definitely, definitely watch the first. It is just so much fun. Classic 60s, Henry Mancini music. David Niven is in it. If you don't know David Niven, you should know David Niven. Classic actor, very famous. Yes, definitely watch this one. Classic movie recommendation number two. The uh, original adaption of All Quiet on the Western Front, I think. This came out in 1930, and it is still so good. I understand there was a recent adaption. I have not seen that. That is also very good. Um, I guess you can't go wrong with this one. There's also a 70s one with Richard Thomas, I think. Any hoodle. Uh, this one is, is just so good. It's so good. It's still hits hard and there are many shots in it that look modern like you can see where modern directors and cinematographers etc uh get their inspiration from because it, some of these shots they could be in a modern movie and that's just so amazing to see um but yes yes definitely watch this one as well Classic movie recommendation number three of Human Bondage. Okay, I'm going to admit I haven't seen this one in a few years now, but I remember thinking it was just fantastic the first time I watched it. It's about a student who becomes infatuated with a waitress, pretty much obsessed with her, in fact. And it kind of leads to self-destruction on both their parts. Leslie Howard, um, a lot of people don't remember who he was. He was a big star of the time, big draw, very cultured English actor. He was in Gone with the Wind, and uh, at the time of casting, that was a big deal. Um, and then Clark Gable kind of took the whole thing over. <laughs> also, um, we didn't get to see anything from Leslie Howard much after Gone with the Wind because he joined the army. I think it was. He joined the military in World War II and uh, unfortunately died in the war. This also has Betty Davis, an up-and-coming actress at the time, and predictably she just hits it out of the park. So this is a treat and a half to see. Classic movie recommendation number... Uh, I already... Uh, lost track. So, uh, another classic movie recommendation, haha! Uh, Destry Rides Again. It's kind of odd that this is, to this day, not more well-known than it is, because 
It has Marlena Dietrich, still decently well-known, James Stewart, iconic, everybody still knows who he was. It is dramatic, it is funny, <laughs> it is still really funny. It is about a uh, an old western town, lawless, and uh, the bad guys are running rampant. So once all the sheriffs have died, they appoint the uh, town drunk sheriff and as a big joke. He takes the job seriously, much to their chagrin, and decides to call in the son of a friend of his. His friend was a great western shooter, very famed, so he's like, oh, the son's going to be just like him, so I'm going to call him and he's going to clean up this town. Well, the son, being James Stewart, arrives and it turns out he's a pacifist. He will not fire a gun. So the opportunities for comedy abound, and there's a great dramatic ending visit, many great dramatic moments, as a matter of fact. Um, my only issue with this, honestly, is that they have um, a romance between James Stewart and Marlene and Dietrich, and both of them do their darndest, they really do, but I'm not believing it. <laughs> I'm just not believing that they are a couple. Uh, that notwithstanding, uh, it's a great movie. Do pick this one up somewhere. Um, I will, if I can find any of these streaming, I will mark it down below. Next classic movie recommendation is one I grew up watching, The Court Jester with Danny Kaye, very popular comedian of the 1950s. He was in a lot of movies. Uh, there was a musical about Hans Christian Andersen. There was the Inspector General. There was the original Secret Life of Walter Mitty, which I think a lot of people do not realize was a remake. However, out of them all, this is the one I really suggest watching. It's still fun for the whole family. It is still funny. It's got great songs. It's got great moments. It has a young Angela Lansbury, and she is hot. Oh, my God. And as it has on the cover, singing, dancing, jousting, a great big humorous battle scene at the end with uh, obvious dummies being thrown in the moat, uh, but it's all part of the fun. Do go and enjoy. Oh, and I almost forgot, it has a young Glynis Johns, I, I shouldn't say young especially, but uh, she played the mother in Mary Poppins, a... A very underappreciated, underutilized part, I feel, with one of the best songs in the movie, in my personal opinion. Next classic movie recommendation, Cat Baloo. Yes, it's a song. This is not a musical, but there is a recurring Greek chorus consisting of, of all people, Stubby K and Nat King Cole. They keep popping up throughout the movie to sing us the plot as it unfolds. This is a great movie. Again, dramatic moments, a lot of funniness. Lee Marvin in two roles, the villain and the washed-up gun hand hired to take him down. It's a treat. It is a real treat to watch. Next classic movie recommendation, Journey to the Center of the Earth circa 1959. I first watched this when I was a kid at a friend's house and just had to have it. I can't believe it took me so long to get it as a grown-up. I love this movie. I've seen it so many times. Starring Pat Boone, the 50s clean, squeaky clean heartthrob. Also, James Mason. I mean, how can you go wrong? Arlene Dahl in a quite an advanced for women part of the time. She is so great. I want to be her. Some of the effects are laughable. The monsters are pretty much what you'd expect. They are basically Gila monsters shot in close up and um, with a red filter over them or something like that. So now there are humorous parts like that. But yeah, then there are other parts that are really quite good, like the part where they're in the actual center of the earth. I will not betray what that looks like. Just watch the movie. Next classic movie recommendation is Father's Little Dividend. I have seen the original Father of the Bride. I have seen the sequel. I have seen the new Father of the Bride and the newer sequel. I mean, newer, okay, okay, they're not new, but they came out when I was a teenager. Whatever. Anyway, my recommendation actually is the new Father of the Bride and this old sequel. This one is just so cute. 
Again, I can't tell you all about it because I haven't watched it in a couple of years. I particularly remember there's a scene in the park where Spencer Tracy, who has been trying to adjust to the idea that he is a grandfather, he's finally coming around to it. He takes the baby to the park in his little, his little perambulator. He sees, Spencer Tracy sees some kids playing and gets distracted and goes to play with the kids just for a second. In the meantime, the cops come along, see an abandoned carriage and wheel it off. Then Spencer Tracy comes back, finds that the carriage is gone and freaks out. Understandably, it is actually quite hilarious. <laughs> uh, yes, watch this one. It's fun. Next classic movie recommendation, The Mark of Zorro. You know, The Mask of Zorro, the new one, that's pretty good. The Mark of Zorro, also pretty good. This is one of those classic movies that my husband, who is a hard sell, watched and really enjoyed. I mean, how can you go wrong? Tyrone Power absolutely nails this part. Linda Darnell is still gorgeous and gives the, the winsomeness necessary of the ingenue part. And it has Basil Rathbone. With swordplay, it, you cannot go wrong with this movie. Next classic movie recommendation, Sherlock Jr. Uh, this particular one is a double pack that also has Our Hospitality, which is cute. But Sherlock Jr. is notable for its early effects. It's a cute little, simple little story about a guy... Uh, going, you know, wanting to get in good with the girl, but he has to face a rival, and the rival frames him for thievery, and he has to clear his name. At the same time, he is a projectionist down at the movie theater, and in the process, he falls asleep and has a dream in which he is in the movie trying to clear his name as the detective. And this is where the effects come in far ahead of their time and still impressive. There are still parts where you're going, how did they do that? In fact, they had a Corridor Crew episode on this movie. Watch that. Watch this first. Oh, it's, it's fun. Next classical movie recommendation. This one is kind of surprising again that it's not more well-known. This is another movie with Leslie Howard, Joan Blondell, another big actress of the time, and Humphrey Bogart in what is basically a supporting role. But <laughs> I have a soft touch for movies uh, that are, as it says on the case here, behind the scenes uh, of Hollywood studios. And this one, it is fun and it is a pretty honest look at movie making of the time. Leslie Howard plays a banker working for a large bank that bankrolls Hollywood Studios. There, The bankers are going, oh no, the studio's losing money, what do we do? And he says, oh, it's no problem, I'm going to go down there and see what their business practices are and I'm going to step in and straighten them out. He gets there and discovers that movie making is not like any other business. And it being set during the Depression, there are flavors of the time. He comes on their side and works with them, not necessarily against the bank, but tries to uh, facilitate that more instead of just being on the side of the bank. I absolutely love this movie. It's, it's, it's fun. Next classical movie's recommendation. 1776. This is one I did just watch because I watch it, well, maybe not every year, but it's one of the three along with Yankee Doodle Dandy and Mr. Smith Goes to Washington that I tend to watch on 4th of July. 1776, if you're not familiar with it, is a stage musical that's been around roughly since the bicentennial in the 70s, and that's when this movie dates from. The songs are absolutely fantastic. I love the soundtrack, always have. The movie stars, now this is interesting for us uh, 80s, 90s kids. The movie stars William Daniels, who you may not know the name of. You may not even recognize him by sight, but once you hear the voice. William Daniels did the voice of Kit, first of all, in Knight Rider. 
but most of us know him as Mr. Feeney from Boy Meets World. That's right, that's him. He was a big stage actor and a great singer. He is so good in this. Everybody's so good in this. Watch it. A quick note, uh, the front cover shows Thomas and Martha Jefferson. Um, It's about our founding fathers and the writing of the Declaration of Independence. Maybe I should have mentioned that. Anyway, um, it shows them. However, inexplicably, this picture is from the Broadway version because that is Betty Buckley as Martha Jefferson. She's also on the soundtrack. However, in the movie, Martha Jefferson is portrayed by Blythe Danner, uh, another decently big star of the time, also known as Gwyneth Paltrow's mother. On to the movies that I don't actually have cases for. Uh, The Best Years of Our Lives. This one is a still decently well-known movie. It did win the Academy Award, several of them, I think. It's got a fantastic cast, Myrna Loy, etc. The big deal about this movie, however... I believe, is that it did star an actual army veteran. Harold Russell was his name. He does a great job acting in this, maybe because the movie for him hits so close to home. This is a movie about veterans coming home once World War II is done and how difficult it is for them to adjust, so it was pretty honest and hard-hitting for the time. Harold Russell... This is a kind of a surprise in the movie, but not a surprise for pretty much anyone who's watching it after the fact. However, however, fair warning, spoiler, Harold Russell lost both his hands in combat. So he has hooks for hands. And so it is understandably a very big adjustment for him and everyone around him. Yes, hard hitting movie, still very strong and recommended. Next classic movie recommendation, I'm on a roll here. Uh, Another movie I haven't watched in a while, but I just remember it being so good. The Heiress, with Olivia de Havilland and Montgomery Clift. Now, Olivia de Havilland, sister of Joan Fontaine, dynamic duo, except for the fact that they didn't really like each other. Other than that, uh, (laughs) she was an absolutely wonderful actress, and she had to fight for that because she was stuck in ingenue roles for the longest time. She was the other half of Errol Flynn in all his swashbuckling movies or next to all of them. She got really sick of it. (laughs) She was really good at it, but she got really sick of it. And so she, I believe she had to take them to court. It was this big fuss with the studio. And then she finally started getting better roles. The Heiress is a very strong movie for her. It's about a, a relatively speaking, plain woman uh, who is the heiress of the title. And she is sheltered by her father because, of course, all the young men are going to come around and just want her for her money. However, in sheltering her, that only makes her want to go with the first guy who comes along, who happens to be Montgomery Clift, who is a gold digger. And she gets the best of everything in the end, but you will have to watch the movie to see how. I'm not gonna tell ya. The next classic movie recommendation is one I (laughs) I have trouble thinking of it as a classic movie because it's from the 70s. And to me, born in 79 and an 80s kid. I mean, I grew up watching movies from the 70s, so to me, that's not super old. I mean, it's in color. It's, you know, it looks relatively modern in many ways. Anyway, I did just watch it for the first time. It is The Taking of Pelham 123, the original. It knocked my socks off. It was so fun. It was such a fun movie. You've got Walter Matthau, who I never realized was that tall, um, as one of the big guys in the New York City subway system. And, of course, uh, they, they did make a remake of this with Travolta being uber Travolta. Um, And so I don't know if you've seen that. I haven't. Anyway, so this movie may be relatively fresh in people's minds just for that. Uh, Terrorists take over the subway. They take over a subway car. The um, people in charge of the subway have to figure out how to handle this very odd hostage situation. 
This is an interesting movie, not just because of Walter Matthau. It has Martin Balsam, who I didn't realize was in so many things around that time. Uh, you may remember him as Detective Arbogast from Psycho. Uh, always a treat to see him. I love him. It also has a young girl, Hector Elizondo, which was very interesting to see. Okay, if you don't know who Hector Elizondo is, he's this guy, and uh, people of my generation may remember him from Chicago Hope. I don't personally because I never watched it, but I know he was on it, and I know who he was anyway. Also, it has Robert Shaw. Now, like many people, I didn't know Robert Shaw from pretty much anything except Jaws. Then I started watching more movies from that era. I was like, oh my god, he was in so many things, and he's really good. He was a really good actor. He, he should be more well-known. He was in Force 10 from Navarone. He was in a lot of stuff, and he was a very good actor. Also, this one keeps you guessing. I couldn't figure out how they were going to get out of it, the bad guys, that is. Um, and then the very end, that last scene, you know it's coming. You know what's going to happen, but they keep you waiting for it right up to the very end. It's, it's fun. It's just fun watching. Okay, I'm going to wrap this up. I could probably do this all day. The last one I'm going to recommend is The Uninvited from, when was that, 1944? Another one I honestly haven't seen in years, but when I did watch it, I was in The Uninvited, the stage version, in a community theater production, like, God, oh, 15 years ago or something, and the stage version was quite different, and we did our best, but we just couldn't make it as good as the movie, which, fortunately, I think I was the only one who had seen the movie. Watch the movie. It is still creepy. It holds up. The effects are just... I started watching this... <laughs> I started watching this in a dark room by myself. F okay, spoiler. The brother and sister are coming to this old English house uh, on the cliff by the sea, and they're looking around. She has a bouquet of flowers. She puts it down, and they're looking elsewhere, and the bouquet of flowers starts to wilt. Just like that, right then and there. And it's like, how did they do that in 1944, I think it was? I <laughs> and I was like, okay, I'm getting up and turning on the light. That was, oh, so freaky. Yes, definitely watch that movie. Watch all these movies. Go, now, watch them. Why are you still here? Why are you not watching movies? Okay, I'll wrap this up so you can go watch those movies. I hope you wrote them all down. If not, I will have written them down in the description. Like I say, I will try to find out if they're streaming and, you know, if they're not, where you can get them on DVD. But in any case, if you've seen these, you know, let me know if you have any other great recommendations. I love old movies. I love new movies. I love movies. Um, but I especially love, like, the off-the-cuff, off-the-beaten-path little movies. Um, so whatever. Whatever you have to recommend, let me know. And I will see, 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 see you with my face next week. That's a promise and possibly a threat. All right. See you then. Bye.